Before these Marvel mainstays can save the world, they have to save themselves from one another and their my super fist, your super face attitudes. A movie designed as an ultra sequel and an origin story. The Avengers, that's what we call ourselves, sort of like a team, Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. In The Avengers, Earth's it's just a 65 second scene. Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark out of his Iron Man guard with no more special effects whiz bag than a Nora Ephron rom-com. But let's do a head count here. Yet listen to its words, and you'll hear the culmination of a billion dollar movie business come? strategy. I have an army. We have a Hulk. An Ocean's and Eleven Hulk. in superhero spandex and chrome. It's called the Avengers Initiative. Five of the six Avengers and their boss sat down together exclusively for Nightline. Who had the most uncomfortable outfit of the six of you? You had like a little air conditioning unit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You had an air conditioning unit inside? We all had the option, by the way. <laughs> I did. There's a mini we bar this, in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson is Black Widow. Chris Evans is Captain America. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. Mark Ruffalo is a new addition in the role of the Hulk. Samuel L. Jackson is leader Nick Fury. How long did it take before you all were in the same room like this, making this movie? The second day on set, I think we were all together, weren't we? But Robert was with us. We've had to let him go since then. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Yeah. He's not going to be appearing in any more Marvel movies. No. <laughs> it's a shame. It was said here on Nightline. <laughs> he was such a what dear was man. Set for release on May 4th. The Avengers seeks to provide a storytelling crescendo for the loyal citizens of Fanboy Nation. The audience is kind of a character in the movie. Bringing together the battle and box office tested Marvel characters who have been laying the smack down in a fistful of mega hits that have grossed two billion worldwide. Captain America and Thor to Iron Man. My turn into one dynamic, dysfunctional unit. We're not a team, we're a time bomb. The real diehard fans, like the Comic-Con folk and all that, of which I'm kind of one, honorary one, have been wondering and imagining if something like the Avengers would ever happen, so they get their wish this year. How significant for you is the response of your hardcore fan to these movies? Very significant. It's I mean, Sort of uh, everything. Yeah. These movies are interconnected. That had never been done before. We did it when we had Sam Jackson walk out at the end credits of Iron Man 1. Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. And the comic fans knew immediately what that meant. <laughs> the fans of Idity couldn't help but give some of these actors pause. I've been part of that for a while just because, well, I am a Jedi. Just Sam Jackson. <laughs> yeah, right. Jedi, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been accosted by the Jedi Council of Rio, oh, Harris, you know, people standing outside your hotel room chanting, You're a grown-ass <laughs> man! What's wrong with you, baby? <laughs> you were kind of out front about the, I don't know, anxiety or reluctance you had about playing Captain America at first. Sure. These characters are beloved, and everyone knows that these movies have high expectations, and if you don't do those fans right, they'll turn on you, and that's scary. I've been fans. Yeah, yeah. it's intimidating. And at times, a rather unruly cast. One can imagine in this group the writer-director trying to fend off the chaos. Hurting adorable kittens is what I believe I said. He would clap and scream and say children. Children? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he'd be like, kids, like. kids. Yeah. I had to use my teacher voice. What does that sound like? Well, at first it sounds very quiet and then it doesn't. Since creating Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Joss Whedon has been this generation's leading light of female empowerment. This scene will burnish that. This moron is giving me everything. This is my entire career in one scene. I tend to write about people that you would discount, and very often they're female, who can really kick your ass. He even speculated on who would win in a fight. You were Buffy, I think, didn't you? Mm. Me, obviously. The widow wins every time. I mean, I've got my widow's bite, I've got my bracelets, thighs. Um, my thighs, yeah. um, and that's about it, really, yeah. Mark Ruffalo takes over for Eric Bana and Edward Norton as the Hulk. I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. Thanks. And his scientist alter ego, Bruce Banner. Stop lying to me! 
channeling not just his inner 10-year-old, but his actual 10-year-old, a fan of the old TV series. And after the third episode, he turns to me, he's like, Papa, he's so misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's it. That's my audience. I have to dedicate my performance to that little boy. A performance like his co-stars, plenty big, but one that plays well with others. This movie should really, by all accounts, not work. These characters do not belong together. This movie is impossible. You see it and you're like, I think this is the best version this movie could possibly be. Guys, I'm bringing the party to you. I'm Chris Connolly for Nightline in Los Angeles.